Hey everyone, this is part four, and we're going to generate the average of a series of elements. So we'll write a function called compute average of numbers. Given an array of numbers, compute average of numbers returns their average. If the input array is empty, your function should return zero. So the first thing I'm going to do is have my replet nice and empty. I'm going to grab this name compute average of numbers, and it says the input is an array of numbers, so I'm going to say numbers as the name of my parameter. And here are some test cases. I'm going to grab them at this point. So one of the first things that it says is that if the input is empty, so if input is empty, return 0. So let's go ahead and code that out first, which again is not exactly what we did in the accumulator pattern, but again we tried to get the idea across that there's uh, different ways to approach subtle facets of the accumulator pattern. One would be to create our average number first, but the problem is, is that an average isn't really going to be zero uh, in a in like all cases. Like an average is, you know, zero is sort of like a random number to be picking. We could just as easily have returned undefined because it's like the average of no numbers isn't zero, it's nothing. But in this case, they want zero, and maybe that's because of the context. So we'll go ahead and leave it as that. But that's why I'm not initializing my variable as an empty case for this edge case. Input is empty is going to be as simple as checking length of numbers. I'm going to return zero in this case. And so now I want to figure out like how the algorithm might work. Now what I would consider is that if I want the average, the average is going to be the sum of the values in the array divided by the length, because that's how you get an average. So what I would say is that the first thing I'm going to do is create a sum variable. And then finally I'm going to return sum. Uh, oh, there's two ways to do this. One would be um, return sum divided by input array length. That'll be the way that we do it. So now I want to decide how to iterate. So if I want an average of the numbers, I'd like to iterate over all numbers using for loop. And then here, I'm just doing a sum. So it's basically exactly what we just did, which is to say uh, set sum to be sum. We can also say increment sum by current value. So let's go ahead and say that. We'll say increment sum by current value after the for loop is ended. And I know that this is happening after the for loop's ended because of the structure of this pseudocode. I know that this pseudocode that's indented describes what happens inside of the for loop. So by assumption, and we'll say definition, because we're going to assume that it's a definition, um, no, we're going to make the assumption because that's how we define how we're approaching problems like this. If pseudocode is lined up exactly where the for loop starts, we know that this pseudocode is going to happen after the for loop ends. Just a convention we're going to stick with. So the first thing would be create sum equals zero. Now, I can actually do the final version of this right now. I could say return sum divided by numbers dot length. And I know that it won't be zero because I've already sorted that out up front. If the length of the numbers array is zero, my function stops here. Once you have a return statement that runs in a function, nothing below that is ever going to run. So we'll go ahead and iterate over all the numbers using the for loop. Say so for variable i is equal to zero, i is less than numbers dot length, i plus plus. Now I want to increment sum by the current value. So I'm going to say sum plus, you can do it, come on, there we go, plus equals numbers at i. After the for loop has, con has completed running, sum will have the sum of the values and numbers, and if I divide that by the length of the numbers, that's going to give me the average. So I should get zero for this, and this edge case I should, <clears throat> excuse me, for this case I should get three, because that's the average, and for the edge case on line 25 I should get zero. So let's go ahead and run this and see if it's working at least somewhat properly. It is. We're going to copy our now completed function, triumphantly return to our input window, run the test, collect our accolades, collect our accolades, and move on to the next section. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.